music. Yeah, you hear that music? Hell yeah. We are live. How's it yes. going, Red Star? Hello, everyone. Brent, do you sing by any chance? Uh, in the shower. In the shower? Uh-huh. <laughs> I do a lot of... Well, sometimes I do character singing. I do, you know... Um... But no, I'm not. I'm not uh, Fantasia. Nobody like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've always wondered that about you. I've never. Uh, I never. I. I feel like. I feel like. Have I seen you do karaoke before? Yes, and I always do the same damn song. Which which is? I always do um, sweet transvestite. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Of course, Rocky, I knew this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocky yep. Horror. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's easy. I, I get to perform it. You know, I don't have to worry about. How I sing, I can just just be drama. Yeah, yeah. You know, how'd you do? I see, see you met my, my favorite. You say from Atlanta. You do that from Atlanta. Yeah, I always do. Um, instead of Transylvania, I do Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, speaking of Atlanta, Georgia, hey Brent Star, thank you for joining us, everybody. I see Rachel's in the house and Andrew's in the house. I love you guys. Um, I wanted to. Um, we're gonna be. Uh, just chatting. Uh, I got Brent Starr. If you if you don't know now, you know this is a dear friend okay. of mine. Um, I have a question. Uh, Andrew just mentioned the uh, the who do you think you are? Where did that come from? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I haven't done that in so long. I know. I feel, I feel bad about two things: not doing that and not updating my website. So, if any of you guys who don't know me, watch this. And then you'd be like, okay, let me go check this whole website out. <laughs> it's old, bro. <laughs> okay, but anyway, um, I used to do it when I do stand up at the end of my show, at the end of my set, or when I'm doing it at a drag show, if I'm hosting, I would get the crowd to chant, Brent Star, Brent Star, who do you think you are? Say what? Brent Star. It's Brent the best Star, chant. Who do you think you are? <laughs> yes, and the thing about that is, is like every time you would do that, you, you um, actually you wouldn't even have to start the crowd up. Uh, I I I remember getting to know you when I first uh, came to Atlanta, and I remember kind of that chant was the way you would walk in the room. You'd come in to people chanting, and I'd be like, "Who do you think?" You yes, I loved it. I just I loved it. <laughs> when did that? When did that? Do you know Trevor? Do you know Trevor from the clubs? Tall, skinny, black guy. He's always prancing. He used to be a black. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh my God, the he napkins. He's every time, yes. every time I see Trevor, I mention the napkins. He, he, he's one of the. I love him so much because you'll, you'll be like, you'll be sitting in the club, you'll just be hanging out, and he will walk in the front door. Um, I apologize, bartenders, but he will walk in the front door, <laughs> grab a stack of napkins, and throw it in the air, and walk through the napkins. He's the best. Yeah. Oh, it makes me so happy. Every and when I see him, I kind of, I'm like, I need to get him napkins. Just absolutely feeling it. And we were like, when I say feel it, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were feeling it, <laughs> and all of a sudden, he kept we kept prancing back and forth. Oh yes. And he just kept saying, Cat Brent Star, Brent Star, who do you think you are? He just kept saying it, Brent Star, Brent Star, who? Do you, and I kept saying, say what? And I really? said, motherfucker. He just kept saying, that's how the song started. So this is Trevor's fault. That's tr Trevor came up with that. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's a and that's one of the things like knowing you for years, knowing that knowing that chant. Um, that introduction to you was so lovely, and by the yeah, way, I'm loving this. I, this is um, if 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 I'm not mistaken, are you doing um, are you doing some Mommy Dearest here? <laughs> yeah, you remember that Mommy Dearest scene when she um, when she she made uh, Christina come into the room where she was, and she was like, "So, did you clean up that mess, Christina?" <laughs> She was super dramatic. Oh, yeah. I just felt like I just felt like wearing it because I'm lounging today. Her um her her morning regimen is one of those I I always mention that uh that intro that intro scene uh to the movie. With that ice. Oh my god, it's the it's the hot water and it's the ice. There's something about it's it. That, like, what are you doing? <laughs> and you know what? I do that now when I shave. Yeah, because you know I, shave, it's I that... get some ice and I just. You know what it's doing? It's uh, it, it it's expanding and tightening your pores. I think it's yes, working. I it's working it out your skin. It's yeah, <laughs> tightening up. Work that skin out. <laughs> how long have you? Uh, how long have you been performing, Brent Star? I know I you, you were going to say how long I've been working out that skin. How long? <laughs> you, no, but for you, no, listen. How long you been? I don't want to. I don't even want to go there. How long you been performing, 
Sprint star. You are. Um, I've been. I started performing right after Abraham Lincoln got shot. Right. <laughs> and what was that? What year was that? Uh, ninety two, eighteen ninety two. <laughs> I started performing since um, actually since I was in school. Yeah. Since I was in high school, officially. But I used to. I when I was a kid, I used to gather my cousins and we used to do the the Carabinet show. And I would gather, what? I would give them their parts, and we would do skits from the Carabinet show. Okay, okay. Um, what, do you know who Carabinet is? Do I know who Carabinet is? One of the. Can I say I'm just so happy that she's still here with us on this planet that we're all still living in a world where Carabinet exists. Um, yes. Yeah, I would say probably my introduction. I grew up with, you know, I think a lot of. Um, I think a lot of parents, um, the the boomer generation, I think they, they all loved Carol Burnett. And I think all the parents of my generation love Carol Burnett so much, they kind of infected their kids. Because I have a lot of friends of mine who are big Carol Burnett fans as well. And we, um, I, my introduction, I think, was more than, I had the Carol Burnett show that I'd watch often. And I, I loved Annie when I was little. And she was the, Annie. Yeah, she was the best Miss Hannigan. I, I, I personally think she's, uh, I mean, I loved her as Miss Hannigan. She was incredible in Annie. Yeah. Oh, Carol Burnett as Miss Hannigan? Yes. Oh, my. Yes. You must. Uh, what about Mrs. Woolachick? She wore that tight ass skirt. Oh, yeah. And she was just chewing that gong. Yep. What, um, what's the skit? What's the skit? Uh, what's her name when she does the skit uh, where she's answering the um, Mrs. Oh, and he's trying to call her. He's got, he's like. That's Mrs. Woolachick. That's, is that her name? Mrs. Okay. That's yeah. what I thought you were saying, but I'm not, I, I didn't realize that was her name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and she's walking around like slowly getting getting to her op- getting to his and office. Because that skirt was so tight she couldn't do nothing. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Uh we love you, Miss Hannigan. Um I so I have uh I have I wanted to know you studied theater. According to your bio, it says you studied theater um back uh-huh. in the in the nineties. What is your um what's your history in in kind of acting? Back then, did you did you enjoy acting? Were you were you someone who had to get on the stage as an actor? Acting was first. I started out doing plays, um, and then I got into stand up. I love it. Then I got into drag. So and acting, then I went back, and then I went back, then back and forth to stand up. So acting was kind of first. It gave you the chops to kind of get on stage. It gave you the the um the, the it exercised that muscle to get on stage. I guess. Uh huh. Yeah, I know that. I mean, that's a lot of the same. I have I have a lot of same friends who have. The, I mean, the same kind of a uh, story. We all either we started in in church or we started in theater. We had we had some sort of background in that. And I think if you want a stage, those are the, those are there are available stages. You got theaters and you got churches that are always looking for people to jump on them. So the first, yeah, I, that's that was that's a good that's a good place to begin. Um, and we know uh, who do you think you are, but when it comes to your name, Brent Starr, did, were you uh, acting under that name already back then? No, I got that name when I was doing stand-up comedy. And just like the song "Who Do You Think You Are," I didn't, I didn't come up with that either. Um, I used to always sign my name Brent with the star attached to the letter T. And okay. I, again, I did that ever since high school. And when I had a regular job, I was a, a manager for a coffee shop. My assistant saw me having trouble coming up with a stage name for stand-up comedy because all the comedians in Atlanta had fake names, and I didn't have one. Um, I, I was going to do Brent Pussy, but I got tired of doing that because it was kind of controversial at that time. Yeah. <laughs> and then she was having to reading one of the invoices from the vendors, like the milk and stuff you get at the coffee shop you know, the drugs, whatever. And she was like, well, why don't you just call yourself Brent Stark? She was reading my signature. And I'm like, huh? She said, isn't this the way you sign your name? Brent Star?" <laughs> and I was like, no, that's kind of stupid. It was Because I was used to it. You see it every day. And then I thought about it. I was like, well, I can't think of nothing else. I'll just try it for a summer. And that was over a decade ago. So it went well. I mean, obviously, I, that's the thing. I remember. Uh, I remember there were many times with you where we would be hanging out 
And I would just constantly back then, you know, this was before Facebook forced you to, you know, forced you to, to post your last name. And I remember following you around saying, what's your what's your last name? <laughs> Where, where'd you get the last name from? You know, I was always so curious. I'm a, I'm a, a nosy person. Used to ask me that, and I used to. And I used to be like, I'm not telling you, that's personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, like I say, Facebook kind of did that to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So you um, so you came to Atlanta, when was that? Was that in the late 90s? Uh, uh-huh. And you developed your stage name, and then you started the Brent Star Show in 2004. Tell me a little bit about the Brent Star Show, that the original um, incarnation of the Brent Star Show. That happened because um, I was actually, once I moved to Atlanta, I was actually on tour, believe it or not, in a gospel musical comedy. And I had what a was that tour. called? I used to act the fool. It's that's in my bio as well. It's called A Good Man is Hard to Find, part two. Part two, that's yeah, that's right. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. And we and we used to go from state to state on a on a tour bus, and that was my life. But after the show, um, when it ended, wow. I really wasn't doing anything. I was kind of taking a break. Yeah. And a close friend of mine who was also in the show suggested that, why don't we come up with our own show at a place called 14th Street Playhouse? They don't have that anymore in Atlanta. Have you heard of that? Oh, yeah. 14th Street Playhouse. It, that building is still there across from... Right. Is that That's SCAD now, yeah, right? Yeah. Huh? That's SCAD, wasn't it? Or it was it was a while back. I'm not sure if it's Yeah, scad. I think it's I think it probably still is SCAD. Yeah. I remember the, the university here in Atlanta. Yeah, I remember um I remember I've seen I've 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 only seen one I only saw one show there. Uh it was it was a great spot. It was actually it was a drag show. It was a drag I think Christmas show or maybe something like that. Child, I've been in Atlanta so long. I saw it when it was they used to do like legitimate shows. It was yeah. like uh, the closest thing to the Fox. It was yeah. so yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a there. I know that there are a lot of plays that opened there that would start there and go on to you know other things. But they, but I know that that's a great that was a great theater where places started. So if you if you live in Midtown Atlanta, that's a great. Um, it was a great theater. It's a good. It's a good building. A lot of a lot of good memories yeah, in that building. Yeah, it's all that. I mean, it's it's the place where if you tell somebody that you perform there, people look at you like, oh, yeah. excuse me, girl. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you. So, so anyway, yeah. he helped me get the show started. So it was called the Brent and Javon Show, and he kept encouraging me to do my own thing. And he passed away, and eventually it became the Brent Star Show because there was no more him; it was just me. And so that's how the Brent Star Show was born on stage. And I did it for a while, and then I got distracted by doing drag. So when you when you when you say let me just stop you real quick because when you when you talk about the Brent Star show what 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 did the show like if I were to go and sit and and experience the Brent Star show what was that like skits it yeah. was a bunch of skits that's it's awesome because you have that theater background so it's perfect that you were right. were you writing these skits and not only theater background I had Carol Burnett um, staying in my consciousness oh yeah. Oh good. Yeah. So, um, and Tim Conway, I love Tim Conway. I used to, I used to do the old man character all. That's what the I was time. gonna ask exactly, because Tim Conway had so many. Well, do you do a lot of? Um, because one of the things I know, I've seen you do a lot of dragons. I've seen you do a lot of comedy. Have you experienced times where you, when you were acting, for example, on stage, did you enjoy doing things like, um, like, like physical comedy, like prat fall, like stage falls, or you know what I'm saying? Still, like, I still do. Yeah, that's what because because that's very that's one of the things about Carol Burnett that I have always re- appreciated. She was you know she was incredible, graceful, and could somehow still do all of those uh, you know tripping over a couch and you know make it look make it look uh, effortless. That's the and thing. Tim Conway uh, as well. Physical slapstick. If you make it look, oh God. <laughs> My thing said call failed. You're here. You still? Oh, I got you. Did that happen to you? It just you went away for a second, but now you're back. It just said call fail. That was weird. Technology. Oh. Nicholas. Hey, Nicholas. Yes, I see him. I see him in the house. Let me add. Let me add this to the broadcast because I have not seen him in forever, and I'm so happy to see Nicholas. 
uh, in the house. Um, yeah. So, so uh, when it comes to your, when it comes to uh, the Brent Star show, you did a lot of. It was a variety show. So you had right. you had a lot of kind of sketch. Now, did did you write did you write a lot of sketch comedy back then? Were you writing? Um. Actually, no. I, yes and no. I was writing the same way I write now in my head. Yeah, things in my head. That's another thing because we talk about, and we're going to talk about comedy in a second. But I, 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 when it comes to when it when it and and when it comes to sketch comedy, and I've worked in sketch comedy as well, improv comedy also. And um, when it comes to that element, there is um, an element with that where you only kind of write if you if you do write anything, you write what we call blocking. You know, you write you block it out. You put where I need to start, where I need to end up. You know what I mean? And then you and then you know how. How that works, and I've I've always been curious, and I, like I say, I'm going to talk about comedy in a second. That's where where I want to want to dive into this. But I've always been curious when it comes to comedy writing. Is um, I know I know, I have a few friends who are comedians, and some of them are absolutely they write uh, they write, and then others are like I've never in my life written a single one of my jokes. Um, is that is that the same with you? Do you? Are you is, I guess it is. It's mixed. Like when I did stand up for uh, Starlight Cabaret for Pride. Mm-hmm. I did it two years. Um, those jokes I I wrote, it was easier to write, too, because I knew the crowd. I knew the situation. Yeah. It was kind of like being at home writing for family or something. Right. So that was a little easier. But uh, when I do stand-up, I have a future. I, have, I go on stage with a skeleton. Uh, or a better way of say it, like a basic outline. Yeah. And then I fill it in as I go uh, uh, with improv as I go along. Like I might have a knock knock joke here, and then I might do crowd work, and then I might go to my second joke about three little bears. You know, I'm just giving yeah. an example. Yeah, absolutely. So I have maybe like four or five written jokes, and then I fill it in because um, well, that's every it. comedian have their own forte. My forte is working off the cuff. Yeah, and that's using your that's using your skills in in acting as well. Um, I think I th- uh, that's awesome. I've always wondered that about different, and I know every comedian's different. So that I always I'm a nosy person. Always have to ask. Um, so you did the Brent Star show, and then I guess let, let's go ahead and talk about it. How did you start doing? Wh- what encouraged you, or what told you I I can try this? I can get on stage at a comedy club. God, that's got to be one of the toughest stages I can imagine. Um, and and you can get on stage. What what told you? I guess what told you that you could get on stage and do comedy? I'm always curious about that from a comedian. Everybody in my entire life. Ah, that makes Everybody sense. Everybody in my entire life. You should do comedy. Me, you should do comedy. Yeah. I should be on TV. I should do comedy. Yeah. Even when even the, um after after I moved back. Okay, so after the tour. Before I did the Brent Star show, like I told you, I wasn't doing anything. I lived in New York for a hot minute. Then I came back to Atlanta. And I was working a regular job, and I was taking a break from entertainment, and everybody was still telling me you should be on TV because I always, if I'm on or in a good mood, I'm always acting fool somewhere. And so, you know, everybody does. Everybody has a funny friend. And and everybody tells that funny friend, friend, friend the same thing. You crazy. You're a stupid hoe. You know? Oh, you should be on TV. Oh, you should be in a movie. Everybody says that. And so I've gotten that my whole life. So I, I really had no choice but to get my fat ass on that stage. So what was your, do you remember your first experience on a comedy stage? It was horrible. <laughs> was it? Did you bomb? <laughs> um. Oh, was it just a rough experience? Well... Uh, it's kind of mixed because my actual first time on the comedy stage was with a partner, and we did an Alvin Costello type ish routine, and it went over really well. But when I tried it on my own, it was horrible. Um, like I said, besides a lot of people in my life telling me I need to do comedy, for me, it wasn't difficult because I was all, I've was i always been on stage anyway, so I just got on stage because I was used to it. But I didn't realize stand-up is so different than when you're telling jokes with your friend 
or when you're doing comedy in a show or play. That's why you'll ever see Carol Burnett actually doing stand-up. Yeah. She'll come and talk to the audience. She'll say, bump up the light. Oh, thanks, man. You have a question? She do stuff like that, That's true. but she don't actually do stand up comedy. Well, and that goes to show as well. It, she is really good at improv, but I wouldn't say I would. You're right. I wouldn't put her. I wouldn't put her on on a stand up stage. Yeah, I could. I yeah, I could. Lucille see that. Ball the same way. We've right. never seen Lucille Ball. Do that's a good up. point. And she's good at it. She's good at improvising. And that and I guess that's that's what I say is she's good that, at improvising. Child, she became the world's. Uh, I don't think of not one single comedian. Has ever reached the level of Lucille Ball. Yeah. Carol Burnett came the closest. No one. I think Whoopi Goldberg was on her way because at one time Whoopi was super successful. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. She's doing a string of and her hit stand ups. Movies. And her stand ups were fire. Her one woman show yeah. was, was really good. But other than that, nobody. Gilda Radner, uh, nobody came as close as, as Lucille Ball. That's a good point. And you never see her doing stand-up. <laughs> never saw her doing... St- oh, wait, hold on. Let me make sure I get that on the screen. I love it. Forever Lucy. <laughs> Represent. I think when it comes to, uh, when it comes to stand-up, there's, there's such a, it's such, a, um, it's such a, a special gene. And it really takes... It, it takes a, an extreme talent and, and uh, drive... Just like I guess you know, when it, when it comes to playing music as a musician, I I always try to kind of associate, and that's one of those areas of mu- of of this of stage work and showmanship that makes me a little bit nervous. I could never imagine getting up and 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 doing a, a stand up routine. So uh, I don't know. Uh, kudos to you on that. I have uh, I want to um, I want to ask you really quick because I I kind of just. I went through a little bit about where you know where you, where you've been here. I just want to ask, where are you from originally? Texas. Originally from Texas. Uh huh. Deep in the heart of Texas. My um next week's guest is uh is she's she lives in Austin uh or, sorry Houston um yeah and I spent some time out there as well. I I love Texas. That's a the steers and queers, babe. Yeah, yeah. That's a it's a there's a special well and. And a, and a lot of really good people come from Texas. It's a it's a it's a great place. I and I enjoyed my Jamie time there. Jamie Foxx. Yeah, I. Jamie uh, Foxx comes from Texas. Beyonce. Carol Carol Burnett comes from Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jamie and Carol Burnett. Yeah, those are the biggest names that I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um. I, I really enjoyed my time there. I I I love the people there. The people in Texas. Are, well, I still keep up with them. They're still they're still uh, some of my best friends. Um, so when it comes to your, so when it comes to your time here, you, you did, you got here, you started doing the Brent Star show. Um, you did some hosting gigs as well. I, I don't want to like miss that. I know, uh, I know you've done, you, you did bingo a lot. When I first came to town, I was seeing a lot about, uh, birthday bashes. I remember that's kind of like the first thing I remember is seeing you. Birthday uh, bashes. Seeing you on like a poster, uh, Brent Star's birthday bash. Um, and this oh, that was for my birthday. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, not like not like you you performing at a birthday. They, they, I remember you from uh, post from flyers that would have your picture, and it would be like, "Come and celebrate Brent Starr's birthday." And I was like, "Who's this guy? I got to get to know Brent Starr." Like, th- you know what I mean? Like, like, who is this whore? <laughs> <laughs> Must get to know him. Um, yes, and, and what is a birthday bash? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and what does this birthday bash entail? I must be involved. So and so anyway, you did you were you've been doing a lot of you've been doing a lot of different types of um you you're a man of many different talents. You have you do you have drag in in your history, you have you MC. You do you do private parties as well, right? Yes. Yeah, do you do you DJ? Do you do those private parties? Uh I only DJ when I do kids parties. Okay. What see and that's the thing. You were so multifaceted and talented. You You've got kids well, parties that you, you do as well. Um, okay, so now um, after the stand up, you have won Georgia Voices. You've won Best uh, Comedian in Atlanta. Um, mm-hmm. When it comes to your experiences in comedy in Atlanta, what are um, what are some what are some of your favorite venues? Let me just ask that. Not just here in Atlanta, but what are some of your favorite venues to do comedy in? Well, of course, the Laughing Skull Comedy Club. It's the number. It's like the number one comedy club in Atlanta. Um, well, I can't say as far as numbers, but it's up there with the Punchline. Yeah. Um, Laughing Skull, and then you have Uptown Comedy Club, 
those three and all the all the comedy legends go there. That's and actually that's where I met uh, Margaret Cho. I met yeah. Chris Tucker, and the the most famous comedian I've ever met in my lifetime so far was Robin Williams, and that was a real treat. Yeah, I remember that picture back then. I, um, did he see you perform? No, no, Mark, okay. uh, no, he didn't. Because I always it, well, and it's always it's a little bit tough to ask. Like, did he see you perform? And then how did he like you? And then you could be like, oh, he loved me. I was the best thing in the world. You know what right. I'm saying? <laughs> um, right. um, no, I. So, so that's I. I have performed is in the music um, scene. I performed at the Laughing Skull once, and it was a night where there were some comedians. I think. Um, I'm not sure if I think Ian Abair was there. I think um, there were just there were a lot of different comedians. It was it was one of the only times where I've gotten to hang out in a green room with a group of comedians, and that is one of my favorite experiences. I'll never forget those kind of experiences because it's it's yeah, funny. That's, if, what, that's the comedy club. Yeah. Yeah, man. And 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 if you if you've ever if you've ever been in 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 an experience like that where you're just kind of sitting in a room full of comedians who know they're comedians, they're getting ready to go out on stage. So. A lot of them are bouncing off their ideas with each other, and um, and even bettering their ideas with each. One of my favorite things I just remember, and I'm, I can't tell the joke here because it's really really dirty. But I just remember that oh. this guy was telling a joke, and he was like, "I'm gonna go out there and tell this joke," and and somebody basically shouted something at him. And it made the joke better. And he was like, I'm going to use that. And he walked out on stage and he used it and he came back and they high fived. And I was like, this is such a cool experience. Like, this is one of the things about being at a comedy club backstage at a comedy club is it's it has a it has a vibe of um, a love, a love and uh, a very positive vibe. Well, it, anyway, at the Laughing Skull, I can't speak for every venue. I, I just know that uh, at the Laughing Skull, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, but, you know, because of the um, the COVID crap, um the Laughing Skull is temporarily not open, so they have been doing. They they took their stage to center. You heard the center stage, right? Oh yeah, center stage in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. And so I've been performing there with them. They do. Uh, it's called Stand Up and Stuff. It's a stand up comedy show, and they now have include variety acts. So I get to do what's my favorite thing to do is literally mix my drag with stand-up. It's kind of what I do in the, in, the, in the gay bars when I do drag shows. You know, I host and I do a drag number, but I get to do a little stand-up and then I go into like a drag number. For me, because I'm one of the variety acts of this comedy show at Center Stage. Huge venue, much bigger than the Laughing Skull, but it's, it's put on by the people from the Laughing Skull yeah. right now. Okay. Well, that's really well, good. I mean, that's a good way to. So they have more space, I guess. Because that, if if you've ever yeah. been in that, in that, um, one of the things I love about that place is the theater seating, and it's all really kind of up close to the stage. So if you if you're sitting in the audience, you have a good chance of being um, being uh, used as a as an example by the comedian. So it's fun. Um, I okay. So I wanted to play. So I have some. I brought along some videos, and I want to play a couple. I want to play this one, and then we'll chat about it for a second. And then, um, and then I want to show a little bit of what you're doing, what you've been doing lately. Okay, is that good with you? Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show everybody this video. This is one of my favorite videos. It's uh, I guess it's a few. It's well, it's it's about five years old now. I noticed. Um, <laughs> and I feel like it's brand new still. All right, everybody. This is uh, Brent Starr on uh, Margaret Cho's podcast. Check this out. I'm here with uh, Mr. Brent Starr, and then he's going to teach me what um, I can't even do it. So I can't do it, so I'm just gonna... Would, you have to eat a whole lot of nine ladies and suck a lot of pickles. Or just suck some things. I, yeah, I'm just not good at that. <laughs> and, then, and then pretend like you're sucking on something and you go... I can't really do it that... <laughs> Only it's so sharp. <laughs> it's so sharp that... I can't... So I'm gonna do... You make the sound and I'll just... like. Yeah, well, let's see. Yeah. Wait, oh, I was off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't about that. <laughs> I did it a little bit off, like a like a Godzilla Okay, movie. one more time. We do it like this. When you do it, when you pop, do your tongue like. Red one two. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's perfect. That's Thank great. you. Love you, Margaret. I love you. So one of the things, one of the things I love about that video is, I know you're still watching it on Facebook. We got that, oh, we got that 20 second delay, and I was like, I'm gonna yeah. be showing these videos, and I'm worried that you're not gonna be able to see. Anyway, yeah. So the. Um, I'm curious. So you met Margaret at, through working down there. I heard so she, she comes in pretty often over there, right? Or, or I guess now that COVID's going on. Yeah, because of the COVID, she's not. But she, um, she was. Right. Born, she came in there a lot, and um, they gave me my own show at the Laughing Skull, and um, she came in on one of my shows, and oh. well, no, actually, little she did saw, she know, <laughs> she saw me do stand up before maybe like a okay. year or a few months earlier and then the second time she saw me it just so happened to be my own show and i think she was impressed and then we just clicked yeah and then i, I started hanging out with her um a lot of different places she's really she's really cool person i met a lot of um big name celebrities but she was right. the first celebrity that we hung out and talked to each other like you and I just right, and that's the thing. That's what I I I'm living in Atlanta just for ten years. I've heard so many people say the same thing uh, about her, and so when I saw that video, it was so it was so heartwarming because she's done such great things for the gay community, and she's just such a um, a wonderful advocate and, and a wonderful person. <laughs> um, so I'm I uh, I when I saw that, it was it made me proud, and also uh, to show that I wanted I wanted to kind of say. Um, it's really cool, and like I say, this is what I wanted to emphasize: is how special it is the bond between comedians and um, and whenever you guys, whenever you click, it's really fire. You can really, you can have yeah. a podcast with her tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So I think uh, I think that's really special here. So uh, you have you've gotten to do you've gotten to do stand up, and you've also done a lot of the emceeing, a lot of the uh, the hosting. You've hosted everything from from the. Uh, bingo and and uh private parties and you're doing you've done the uh was a library you worked in the you, you did the reading you <laughs> were you drag queen story time. yes drag queen story time yeah, thank you that I, was that postman bookstore at um punt city market that bingo and, bingo was actually the saving grace that kind of allowed me to get back into stand up because I told you I did the Brent Star show on stage and then I got into drag. So I kind of put the Brent Star show on hold and I got into doing, I saw I started doing more and more drag shows to the point where that's all I, at one point, that's what all I was doing. And then I was still getting those comments. Like I told you early in this video, yeah. people saying I should be doing comedy. I should be. Honest. So it was, it was eating at my consciousness. So I said, I need to get back to stand up. So I kind of took a break from doing so many drag shows. So I got into bingo because it was easier to do bingo than instead of constantly coming up with a drag number. And so while that took the edge off of me a little bit, I was able to focus more on stand up while I was doing bingo. I love that. That is such a, and that's such a good, that's such a good way to learn. That's such a good way to learn how, the reasons why that was. Cause I remember seeing you at bingo all the time and you were, I, I, I seeing you posting your flyers and everything with um, how you were hosting Bingo, and that's a, again, that's another skill. It, it's um, it's beyond. I love doing Bingo. Yeah, it's kind of because, beyond improv, okay. and and because yeah. you have to really be on your toes the whole time. So I wanted, I don't want to take up any more time with this. I want to show you, I want to show everybody some some clips from some yeah, of what you what you've been cool. doing lately. Yeah. yeah. So lately you've been doing during this whole how have you been handling covid basically? How have you been ha not you haven't handled covid. How have you been handling this um this pandemic? Um I I kind of dis I, I decided to make it a positive thing for me. Yeah. Uh cuz it's hard for me just to sit or, sit at home. Um I do enough of that at the dialysis clinic. So while I'm at home I have to do something. So I decided to um, learn how I've, I decided to do something that I've always wanted to do, but I just put it on the back burner, and that is edit videos. And what I mean by that is basic editing. And that's why that's how I got back into the Brent Star Show, which you get ready to lead into now, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how I got back into it because I wanted to learn how to edit video. Once I learned how to do that, I didn't have to call fifty thousand people to help. So um, I was like, wow, I got my camera. I got my ring light, which you can't see. Right. But you can see. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so yes. I just started doing the Brent Star Show. 
um, yeah. Well, that's and and that's what I want to. Yes, I am leading into that. I think uh, when it that's exactly how we started this. You know, we are all kind of coming up with different ideas. What I love about what you did, and you were very inspiring to me as well. I um when I was watching you back this summer, uh, posting. I, uh, your, um, your Brent Star show, what I thought was so unique is how you kind of, you did it. You turned it into a sketch show. Um, uh-huh. Now, I've got a couple of clips here for YouTube's sake, because we do upload these onto YouTube. So for YouTube's sake, I had to cut some songs, but I hope you can hear a little bit of them uh, <laughs> and uh, and get the idea. I'm going to play this this first one. This is uh, Alicia in Wonderland, and then we'll chat about it, okay? Alicia in Wonderland, a.k.a. Alice in Wonderland. That's right. That's right. <laughs> here it is, everybody. The night. To me, darkness is as clear as daylight. What am I? You someone who is proud that they are black. Oh, and I am too. What am I? <laughs> <laughs> Let's play catch up, throw the shade. You girls can't take my lemonade. Girl, I love Beyonce when she do lemonade. Yes, girl. Girl, wait a minute. Why are you talking like that? One lump or two, darling. I can take two. I'm going to need another one for you. Are you ready for your next? Trip? What? Yeah. What? Wait a minute. What do you mean? Girl, what do you mean by trip, girl? <laughs> what? 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 What am I? You are where you are, darling. Wait a minute. What? what you, we are where you are. Girl, what? Wait a minute. Why are we here? Welcome to my world. Your world? Oh, oh, wait. There's that rabbit. You see him? Look, look, look. Can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? Do 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 I have your attention? That was some trip. Where did the man have to go? Damn. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody been in my house playing cards, honey. Who been gambling? The Joker. John, what is going on? Oh, the Jack of Hearts. What? What are all these cards? It's some on the floor. A four of hearts. Oh, and a seven of hearts. Someone had a lot of heart. Six of them. Ooh, all these cards. Honey, who ever put all these cards all over my house? Off with their heads. Mm. <laughs> okay. Oh, and they all heart. I don't got that. I don't got that. <laughs> Girl, who are you? Darling, I'm the queen of hearts. I hear there's a rumor in Wonderland. A rumor? There's a white rabbit. And he's looking for you. Oh, girl. Don't be scared, girl. <laughs> Off with her head. Yes. Off with her head. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Off with her head. Silly rabbit. Oh. <laughs> girl, I gotta go. Huh? I gotta go. Oh. Where does she go? Wow, everyone in Wonderland just snapped and they disappeared. Wait a minute, I'm Alicia in Wonderland too. Hold on, let me try this. Wait! Ah! Whoa! Brent, look at you, you back to normal. Yeah, I know, back to my regular clothes. Woo, that was stressful in Wonderland. This is not my house, where am I? No, this ain't your damn house. What you doing here, honey? Baby, why don't you come over here and sit down? You look a little stressed out. Do we know each other? Are you the caterpillar? <laughs> no caterpillar, bitch. I'm the oracle. The oracle? The oracle. Oh, God. Is this the Matrix or the Wonderland? Which one is it? <laughs> Follow me. Wait. Wait, where are you going? 
Honey, I got a meeting. I told you I had a meeting. I got to go. So I wait, wait. You're the oracle. You're supposed to give me this great oracle advice. Oh, honey. I, and plus, I'm kind of scared. The white rabbit is, is following me. The answer's in here. Sometimes the biggest fear you have is a fear of yourself. Oh, is that your doorbell? Wait, we're outside. How is that possible? It's not my doorbell, honey. Huh? That's your doorbell. Somebody's at your door. I gotta go. Wait, how do you The answer is all up in here. I'm the fucking oracle. Uh, oh! And they will have to watch the rest, or they will have to look you up and find that. <laughs> how can they find, by the way, how can they find your videos? Uh, just just come to my um, my Facebook page. And it is. Let's, hold on. <laughs> um, I'm getting ready to put my name in the comments. Oh, perfect. Yeah, do that. Put it in the comments. Um, and I will, if you're on YouTube, I will read it. Later on, I promise. You can just Google Brent Star or you go to BrentStar.com. Yeah, you go to exactly. my website, BrentStar.com. You can it even... has links to all my crap. Yeah, and you can find it if you look if you really if you type Brent Star show, you can find you can find him and be able to find right. Him. Thank so, you. If you go to the search box of Facebook and type in the Brent Star show. Exactly. So if you um that was who was the Oracle just then? Oh, that was Lynn. Lynn is um a wonderful friend of the of the gay community. She is the gay community because yes. she has just been accepted to be part of the mayor's council. Go on. <laughs> she has just been accepted to be part of the mayor's council for yes. LGBT. That, that is amazing yeah. news. Yeah. Yeah. LGBT key. Yeah. Key. 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 Yeah. I know. Alphabet. I know. It's and it, you know what? That's when it when I and. Nobody, I would say nobody in this city has earned that quite like she has. She's really been um, a pillar in this community. So Everybody congratulations to you, Lynn. Lynn. And yeah, absolutely. That was Lynn playing the Oracle, uh, if, you, uh, if you didn't know. And um, oh, Rachel Rage said she's followed. Let me, let me post this up here. She says, followed and love him. Um, I want to say, uh, in just a second, we're going to play a game. Thank you, and, Rachel. And Rachel Rage is the one who made the... Um, the tune for the game. I, I made up this game, and I'm excited. We're gonna be playing this from now on, and she made the tune for it, so I'm excited about that. So thank you for thank you for chiming in, Rachel. Uh, anyway, um, so that that was. Let me just let's talk about that for a second. So you started doing okay. these videos. Now I did have to cut out the songs. Um, so sorry, guys. If you if uh, if you want to see the full videos, you can go and watch. And you do want to finish that because there is a there's a twist ending there when he opens the door that I think is is really fun to yeah. watch. Um, so. Tell me a little bit about that. How has that experience been for you? Has it been as as opposed to because you're used to being live on stage in front of people? Um, now you're doing a little bit of like um, self, uh, um, not even it's not like I wouldn't say self promoting. It's it's you're you're putting on your own show. It's a you're you're it's a mix of self promoting. So are that. you are you writing these? Are you writing this out? Is this you um, coming it's up? The, and, it's the same as. Um, it's the same response as the other ones. Right. It's, so you're coming it's, up it's with in the, my head. Absolutely. So each scene you just you're whenever you sit down, you're just like, this is what our scene's gonna be like and this is what we're gonna do. This show, um, episode seven for a short time was my favorite episode because for me it was like magic. Yeah. I did that episode strictly based on the costume. Um Brent Star show was a weekly show because when the pandemic first hit, everybody was on shutdown. Yeah. Um I was I had enough time to do the show every week. And that's kind of mind boggling to come up with something every single week. And so I just went to my costume closet and I wish I had a camera. I can go shake my costume closet. But anyway, know, that's, a, that's a, I was I'm like, sure it's a big one. I was like, what do I have that nobody's ever seen? Then I was like, this cheap dress that I caught on sale, that's spirit Halloween, <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. And I was like, but that's just Alice in Wonderland. I was like, oh, yeah, I got a rabbit costume because I do kids' parties. So I had the rabbit costume. I got Alice in Wonderland. That was all I need to come up with that show. Yeah, your closet really must be like either either a, a nightmare or a dream because you've got – you have everything from drag to like Spider-Man to, you know, <laughs> like uh... – You know what? I come from – I used to work at the container store, so I have a – 
I'm like I love to organize stuff. Oh yeah, no, I mean I'm I'm not saying it's yeah. not organized. I promise. I'm saying oh, more no, than no. I. Th- it, no, when I'm really busy. <laughs> It is a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Have stuff everywhere. No, I just imagine that within all, like all of the different costumes you'd have, it's there's a lot to choose from, and um and you could really have a lot of fun. Um, I know I've seen and the Spider Man is one of my favorites. Uh, I have another. Um, it was one of my favorites too. I, okay, before okay, yeah. We have to talk about Alice in Wonderland, but yes, please. I just have to say, real quick, um, you know I love superheroes. Yes. You, you may or may not know that. Yes. When I get to play Spider Man, just the fact that I'm getting paid to be Spider Man is an awesome feeling. And at those parties, the kids at the beginning, they do what they do to everybody. They say, You're not the real Spider Man. You're not the real Spider Man. And then about 10, 15 minutes in, they start believing it. And then they start treating me like I'm really Spider Man. <laughs> and then before you know it, the kids address me as Spider Man. They say, like, Spider Man, pass me the ball. A Spider Man, can I do this? Or the parents will call me Spider Man. And yeah. by the time I get to the car at the end of the gig and I'm on my way home, I have to snap out of it. And I'm like, what? It's like a high. I'm like, wow, I was Spider Man yeah. for like 30, 40 minutes. It's, it's an amazing <sighs> feeling. Yeah, and that's a, that's a beautiful feeling. thing. And that's what I'm saying. You have one of the things I love about what you can do because of because just who you are, you're eight, you. Brent Starr have the ability to be MC and children's party host and the library, the drag library queen. <laughs> drag queen story time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's not in the library. <laughs> and, and and it's not in the library. It's at it's at a it's in a at a bookstore, right? At, at Pond City Market. Uh-huh. At Pond City Market. But a lot of drag queens do do it at a library. That's where you get that from. That's what yeah. No, I've seen and that's what I'm saying. I've seen it for a while and I love that you do that. That is it's so beautiful and it also it it's really special uh, because I do believe it. Like I say, I think it's really important that that you um, sh- um, add shine. I uh, love this light. <laughs> ah, yes. Um, I need to. I need to go ahead and find this next video because I have. I wanted to show everybody this. This was one of my favorites. We had to oh, wait, play I'm this sorry. one. Before you go to the next video, I have oh, to give a shout out. Yeah. To yeah. the actors who was to the uh, to the drag queen, please Charmaine do. Charmaine Dupree, who played the Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts. Yeah. She came up with that costume at the last freaking minute. And it was fire. Absolutely amazing. Terrifying. I love Jesus. it. I know. Those and eyes. The guy who did the Mad Hatter. Off of the I head. Give a sh- That's AJ, um, dancer in Atlanta. Yeah. He is, he's a choreographer. Can I have your for, attention? Uh, for your, huh? When he says, can I have your attention? Yeah. He's yeah. A, yeah. He played the Mad Hatter. Yeah. Um, both of them got their parts. The day, uh, well, Mad Hatter got hers the day of the Queen of Hearts. She got hers the day before, and she <laughs> wow. thought she was gonna do it. Ne- she thought she was gonna do it next week. She said, "Oh, I go get the costume, um, t- and three days from now, and I haven't read it." She said, "When? When is it?" I said, "Tomorrow." <laughs> and she was there. She was ready. Did so you I see that? that? And that dress, people- the cards. I love absolutely that. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Now the the limericks or the the little poems that he would recite did he did he come up with those? Yeah. I love he that. Just happened to have those, just like you. I'm, I'm sure you got a lot of songs in your head. Mm-hmm. He just he just had all that stuff stored in his head. Oh he just, good. It was the okay. Right time for him to pull it out. Yep. See, like I say, if you're out there and you're a performer, every little thing you're doing to perfect your skill is important and crucial. You never know when you're gonna use it. Can I? I want to. I want to show this one because Alicia in Wonderland, that Alice in Wonderland, was my favorite. I loved this next one so much when I saw it. It was in the middle of. You have to think. We, we, you know, it's still you know, things are still tense. But this was this was in the middle of the the protests that were going on. And you and you like me, we we like to say let's just make Facebook a positive place for a little while. And you did this wonderful sketch. I'm gonna play everybody. We'll chat about it. Oh, I'm so glad we're having this moment. Me mm. too. I'm glad we got to spend some time together. Yes. I know with the, everything going on right now. Uh huh. Just so tense. You know, it's it's just too much tension going on. That's why I just want to just be me and you. We stay at home. We're not out in the real world. No, just enjoy the company of a a black man and a white man together. Yeah, the black man and the white man in bed. Where they at? <laughs> Silly. You know what would make this moment even better? What? Some music. Okay, we play some music. What? We can play you some wanna, music. Do you want to hear my playlist? No, that would be cute. Okay. No, because you actually 
your music sometimes does help. You got quirky music, but it helps. I I know how to curate a playlist. Yes, and it take our minds off of what's going on in the world. Absolutely. Yes, because I don't want to hear nothing about no race right now. No, no, no. This is just songs <sighs> I, I love. Okay. I remember how last about, time you played all that jazz. I love it. I do love jazz. All right, how about how about this one? We'll start here. No. Tiffany and Ivory. Remember, we just want to keep it just me and you. I see how this could be constructed. I thought it was right. about a piano. Yeah, it is about piano. But it is about piano. But, okay, no, that's fine. Let's play I, something I, else. Next song, next song, next yeah, song. Yeah, okay. Next. <laughs> First of all, what is, what is all this? Oh, <laughs> No. No to the dancing or no to the song? Both. Both. No, that's black and that's plain old black and white. No okay. ma'am. Okay, hold on. I gotta scroll a second. We'll find something. This. No more black and white song. You being funny. Uh, no. This is the happiest kind of music. Oh, so you got me a Christmas present? Just <laughs> just enjoy. Just enjoy. You want me to pull out that mistletoe? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that was oh, cracking that? me up. Yes, that was cracking me up. So who is this comedian that you were with in this? That is Mr. Matthew English. M Matthew English. And that's from episode eight, in case you're curious and you want to go back and watch the whole thing. I did have to cut the songs, I understand. Um, but I hope you under I hope you got the jokes, because that was that was such a good sketch. I couldn't I couldn't leave it out. Um, so Matthew English, he does also a stand up bit in that, right? Yeah, if I would have known you would cut the joke. That last song, I just would have done it for you. I <laughs> yeah, see, exactly. Of a wall. And stop there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, so you guys just that. How was that one written? How did you guys come up with that? Well, first of all, I'm um, sure you probably noticed this is my second costume change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, because I I just like to be comfortable. But anyway, <laughs> and then plus the video clip you just saw, this was on that bed. I saw that. I love it. <laughs> um. Like you said, uh, this was right in the this. Okay, so when I posted Alice in Wonderland skit, it was right at the same time when the whole George Floyd incident started escalating, and I didn't know it was gonna do that. It just started doing it. So by the time I got to this, when I said we have to do something to make a commentary on what's going on in the world, and what I wanted to say with a black guy and a white guy in the bed together, at the end of the day, black people and white people love each other. Mm -hmm. um, ever since slavery, it was, of course, we don't get along, but we sleep with each other. <laughs> we eat each other's food. We wanted our hair to be like each other. We, we, we do each other's music. Mm -hmm. We do each other dances. We copy each other's culture. We like I said, and we love each other. So at the end of the day, we love each other. We just seem to can't get along. But some of us do, and some of us really love each other. So mm -hmm. then you have us in the bed next to each other. Well, I think that's one of the that's one of the most beautiful things about comedy is that you're able to do something like that, where you can take um, you can take something that's so such a dark uh, time, such a hard thing that that the country that the that we as that we as the United States of America are going through, and that's your job. You know what I'm saying? As a comedian, I think that's what's so beautiful is that you can you naturally come up with these things. And we just kind of look at it as like we look, I think for me anyway, I can't say we. I feel like for me, uh -huh. there are two places I look whenever things go wrong, and that is the news and comedy. I need two things. I need, the, I need what's going on right now, and then I also need something to bring me down. And one of the things I appreciate so much about comedy is that in times of um, – in re you know, in times of crisis, in times of hardships, or in times of trauma or, or issues, comedy can really shine through. I think that's one of the reasons why they say a lot of comedians have to come through some some hardships in order to come up with a really great stand-up, that sort of, you know, deal. Um, but I think that's a really great uh, point that, that you made in that video. And one of the reasons I wanted to, to show that as well is because that had uh, it's, it's such a, a, a poignant meaning for for this day and age, you know. Um, yeah. And and also it's your, and also you're making us laugh. Mostly you're making us laugh, and afterwards yeah, you're skit, making us think. The, the skit we don't even we I purposely decided not to talk about what's going on. I just wanted I wanted people scrolling on their Facebook timeline to see that image. Yeah. 
what are these two doing in bed together? Both of them half naked. Yeah. I want them to see <laughs> Right, that. right. And then I want them to, to it, it remind them that, you know, everybody, all black people and white people are not um, at odds with each other. Um, but it's, it's really sad, though, that, you know, what is going on with the injustice of the police brutality that's going on? Yeah. I can't, you know, right. my job, comedy is to, like you said, make people laugh. And, and try to take your mind off of the rea- the well, harsh reality. And, and I don't even just think for it's, a few minutes. I don't even think it's only just to make people laugh so much as you can tell a story. Um, and, and it can be a sad story, but if you tell it, if you're a comedian on a stage and you tell that, you know, someone can tell a sad story that makes people cry, but a comedian on a stage can, can tell that same story and the entire audience will die laughing. There's something very special. It's a gift. You know what I mean? And I think that's where, you, that's why you would get that kind of uh, reaction your whole life where people would say, you should do, you should be doing stand up. Well, my favorite is a good joke followed by a good song. So that's why I love singers. Yes. Yeah. Well, and again, with the variety shows, you're a variety show host. I'm a variety show host. These are, I agree. I'm going to agree with that wholeheartedly. I always think, I, I always think a, a, a good, you could com- combine the two and it's some of the best comedy in the world when you have, uh, when you have that, the piano or and a, and a comedian. I've seen, I've seen drag comedy done on a grand piano, that sort of deal. It's, it's some of the, it's just some of the funniest stuff. Uh, yes. Now, speaking of the funniest stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and start playing a little video here. This is what this is uh, the last video I got, um, and then I want to play a little game, and then we're gonna wrap it up. But I want to show I want to show people this video of you because this is a little bit of you doing um a little bit of uh, outside the box, out off of the stage, out in public. Um, uh, you know, this is my parody of Tina Turner. My and this ha- this is number one brunch star video so far. Yeah, it got the most the most views, the most likes, and the most shares. So this is Brent Starr walking into uh, a Wendy's as Tina Turner. And then uh, the audio is going to kick in in just one second. But right now, I love that dress and those boots. That's my Tina Turner dress. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Do y'all have the four for four? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no onions, no pickles. <laughs> he wants a lemonade. <laughs> hey, Tina. Catch. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. Oh, gosh. That'll be all. <laughs> oh, where do I put the credit card? So how long you been doing Tina, uh, Brent? Oh, ever since I left Memphis. How long over that? 85, 
Last year. <laughs> <laughs> so Tina, Tina, I know you. I know you're ready to go. But one question. Okay. Fans want to know, where can they see you? Well, when I'm in Atlanta, you go to Brent Star Georgia page. It's called Brent Star Graham. And there I am. And we're rolling. 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 Rolling on. <laughs> All right. Well, nice seeing you, Tina. I live for this video, Brent Star, and I had to end it with, I had to show, tell me about what, where were you at when you were recording this? What was going on here? Was there some sort of carnival happening? Well, we were on Buford Highway. <laughs> you know, we got the windows at Buford Highway. Welcome, and, welcome uh, Tina Turner, everybody. <laughs> <woo -hoo. laughs> you know, every now and then, we're going to start out nice and Yes. That video actually came from me thinking about doing that last scene with the French fry, I mean, with the chicken nugget, and then we're going to end up rough and I ate it. That's all we had planned. Everything else we just did once we got there. So that was the start of the uh, the act. That's what, that was the genesis. <laughs> you just thought about doing, so were you eating a burger when you heard the song? Was that? <laughs> N um, I don't know. I was, no, I was at home out of costume. And that idea just popped into my head because I, I love, love that, that intro that she does. Yeah, we me too. We're going to take the end of the song, start out nice, and then end up rough. Yeah, yeah. And I then I, I dragged my friend Diamond Dupree. I dragged her out to Beautiful Highway. <laughs> oh, I love it. That yeah. Was, that's the first one. That's I saw the, the farmer's market in the background. Done. Yeah. <laughs> and we and we filmed it. Um, everything was – now, You, I'm sure, I'm sure it was very obvious that it was completely improvised. Yeah, and that's amazing. So how do you I I have I've always wondered this. How do you have the uh where do you get that courage? What do you is it just from being on stage enough and just kind of goofing off enough? Totally. It's, yeah. It's it's cuz I've been on I've literally been on stage the way too hot. It feels like my whole life. So that part came natural for me. Yeah. But and I, well, sometimes I do get nervous. Sometimes I do get nervous. I guess I that's the question. What I'm wondering is, do you? That, yeah, so sometimes you would get nervous. That's uh -huh. that's encouraging to me because I think even as a stage performer my whole life, I, I would be so nervous to do something. I'm always so nervous to do anything um, that no one's expecting. I, I'm used to having perform, you know, being able to perform in front of people who are there and they've either paid or they're ready or they know what they're getting. And I've always been so nervous about doing the unexpected. Expected, and I guess that's one of the things that I really appreciate about you. You're a risk taker. Are you a risk taker in in all aspects of your life? Is that yes and no? But look at Andrew' uh, comment. He said Ike is going to find. He said Ike's going to find out you've been eating fried food. Let me see here. <laughs> I have the comments hidden there. I, Ike is going to find out you've been eating fried food. Oh my god! I don't Andrew, even want to. Andrew' comment's been funny all night. Yeah. That's um that's a that's a joke. I don't even want to <laughs> Um okay, and then I want to ask one more thing. Um are you are you willing to participate in a in a game that I have created? Specifically okay, let's do it. I created this game specifically for you. I hope we can. I'm gonna. I'm gonna want to use this game every chance I get. But um, I couldn't possibly think of anybody as interesting. This right. This, is this right. The, is this the game that Rachel came up with the music? Yeah. So Rachel. Rachel Rage came up with the music for it. So um, this is a game that I'm gonna be calling Explain This. And uh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I love you, Rachel Rage. You're the best. So this is explain this, guys. And what I'm what I've done is I've compiled a a few photos from Brent Stars, um, uh, social media accounts, and uh -huh. I basically some of them are funny. Um, I'm just or I just I'm curious. I'm just curious about them. So I need you to explain this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you these photos. I need to screen share so that you can see. I hope it doesn't make us glitchy. It may make us a little bit glitchy, just me showing you my screen. But um, I'm going to screen share to you, Brent Starr, so you can see these pictures. And we're going to try to play Explain This. Uh-oh. I can't wait to see which pictures. 
<laughs> okay, so Brent Starr, what can you tell us about this photo right here? That is from a kid's party. That is me dressed like Mr. Incredible. <laughs> no, no, not a kid's party. Drag Queen Story Time. That's Drag Queen at, Story Time. At Pond City Market, a Poseman bookstore. Okay. How did the kids, just, how did the kids react? Like, uh, Mr. Incredible. I like to dress up like cartoon characters. Yes, that's the best. And the kids must love this. Like, this has got to be a ton of fun with the makeup and the Incredibles. That's oh my God, they love, it. especially the little toddlers, because I have the glitter on my eyes and lips, so they look at me like I'm candy or something. Yes, I love it. Okay, so I got another one. So Brent Starr, can you explain this? These random photos are hilarious. <gasps> <laughs> you picked some good ones. Oh. That is from the only movie I'm in where I actually get credit, a big professional movie. That's called Dumplin'. That's Dumplin. That's Dumplin from Netflix. That's uh, that has uh, Aniston. Jen uh -huh. Aniston and uh, Danielle McDonald and Dolly Parton's in it. Uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's and an, that's Ginger Minj behind me from RuPaul Drag Race. And that scene is a, is a ton of fun. I really enjoy that. I, yes. I really enjoy the whole the whole movie's great. If you haven't seen it, go and see it. It's on Netflix. You know what? People to this day, people keep sending me messages saying, "I saw your Dumplin. I saw your Dumplin." Oh, well, yeah, and it's a great, I mean, well, and they're going to keep doing that for the rest of your life. Brent Starr, can you explain this? <laughs> <laughs> How did you pick? Okay, this is a good game. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what oh this is about, Brent Starr. Who is okay, this? So is this you? <laughs> that's at a show called Drag Neek, and that was when um, Jennifer Hudson first came out with her song called Where You At? And my concept for doing the song was I got left at the altar. And I'm singing, where are you at? Oh, I but love it. But coincidentally, when, um, when, they hit, when they hit the vote for the gay marriage to be um, uh, approved and, yeah. uh, uh, with the Supreme Court, I had reposted that. But yeah, that's originally from Drag Neek, a, sh a show that I had to do. Oh okay. You're picking some really good photos. <laughs> well, what about this one now? Uh, I don't know if this one is child approved. What oh, are you doing there, Brent Starr? Now, that's not, that's not for a show. I had just finished a show, actually, and sometimes I leave my makeup on and put on my regular clothes, mm -hmm. and I was just hanging with some friends. That was actually outside of Friends on Ponce. I love around it. The, around the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a, um, he's a jolly, happy soul for a reason. I am so glad that you did not tell me which photos you're going to do. <laughs> no, this, that would I be fun. I am surprised at what the gift Okay, well, what about this, picture? Prince Star? This one, this one right here is one of mine. I love this one because I, I, this is a, this is just good. You're so good in this role. How, uh, tell me a little bit about oh. this photo. <clears throat> I don't even know. What I mean by I don't know, I don't know which show that's at, but I right. do Little Richard so many times. I've done Little I did Richard have a lot time. of photos to choose from, and I know you're wondering why I would choose the one with the blurry hands, but I just love this shot because you have the full body right there. Yeah. It's an action Little shot. Little Richard, that's, you know, that's that's one of the things I, like, uh, when I do Tina Turner, that's actually a parody of her, but Little Richard's an impersonation because I look just like him. Yeah, and you can kill him. I mean, man, you got that Little Richard thing down. You got it, you got it down. I, right, okay. but I wouldn't say I kill him, but I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Valid. Good point. Poor wording on poor wording on my choice. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about <laughs> tell me a little bit about this photo, Brent Star? Oh, that's um oh, I can't think of his name. He's kind of popular. Emilio Emo, I think that's Emo Phillips. I think Yeah, that, Emo yeah. Phillips. I yeah. was gonna say Emilio Phillips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He that was backstage. Like I said, I met a lot of um Big names comedians. So that was backstage. And, um, Where was that? He's he was popular. He was one of the real popular comedians during the eighties. Oh yeah. And I met him backstage. I was like, he told me the first time he met me because you know he's he, part of his comedy. He's so super random. Right. Yeah. He's he just a, at, you have to look him up because he's he really said, unique. From an acorn to an oak tree, he just looked at me and just said those words, and I'm like, <laughs> I had never. I, that's an old 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 expression. He was the first person 
that I've ever heard that expression. I was like, huh? And what does that mean? From an acorn to an oak tree? You grown? You you're growing? You It's like saying, yeah, like you like right now you might be just a just an acorn, but one day you're gonna be huge. I huge love oak that. Tree. From an acorn yeah. to an oak tree, he said that to you. And this is, yeah, absolutely. Emo, Emo Phillips, if you, if you want to Google him, Google him. He's very unique. His style is very unique. He has a lot He's of really good... If, I'm a David Letterman fan, and he, he has a lot of uh, bits and routines that he does with David Letterman. And he, on, on the He's David been Letterman. in the game a long time. I yes, love he him. has. Okay, and I have one more picture for you for explain this. And uh, I am amazed at these pictures. <laughs> this one's one of my favorites. What is, <laughs> where is this picture taken? <laughs> 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 where was this that was when i was just a kid oh. i was i was actually in college and um you know i was a theater major right and we were that was when we was on tour and what school we was this at the hotel and we just took a picture just some, a friend just took a picture where where was the school what was the school called it's called um uh, it's prairie view oh prairie view okay I love that picture. So I, many memories. Yeah. Oh my god. It, it, I had to, I had to search deep for that one, but that one right there is uh it's just it sure says did. a lot. It says a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It says a whole lot. Look at the Coca-Cola t-shirt back then. That was that was the style, Coca-Cola. And where was and 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 this wasn't even you weren't even uh in and, and this brought you now you're in Atlanta, home of Coca-Cola. Yeah, isn't that something? Isn't, isn't that, that something? Yeah. Hey, Brent Stark, thank you for playing. Explain this, man. I appreciate I that. Love it. Yes, that was a lot of fun. Uh, and and thank you to Rachel Rage for uh for the for the music. You're awesome. I'm gonna be using yes, that. Rachel Rage. I'm gonna be using that forever. Um. Okay. So I I um I I got through basically your history. Um. I know that when I met you, you had you had been you had been doing a, a hosting karaoke. I met you the night I met you. And I just wanted to say this, the night I met you uh, was one of my very first nights kind of out in Atlanta and getting to know some people. And basically when you're a singer in Atlanta and you, you're, you're finished singing or rehearsing, people say like, Hey, let's go grab a drink. And there's karaoke. And so, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you say not at all. And then sometimes you're like, yeah, let's go sing. And one of those nights you were hosting and you were wearing, um, well, you you wear platforms, right? Or you just you're, you're tall, but you wear platforms, right? Like yeah, you back that night. I remember for some I know, reason. I'm sure, I was wearing pumps. That was an acorn to an oak tree. You were you were tall, and I just remember you were wearing that hat and that star, and you were hosting, and it was such an it, it is um it's an honor. It was it's been an honor to know you uh for this decade that I've known you, and to um to be a part to watch you. Uh, you progressed and 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 with everything you've done and i'm just so proud when i saw dumpling that was a, that was a really big that was awesome because that's that's where you belong i'll be one of those friends who say you belong on film you belong on the stage ah, um thank so, you. so no but thank you and that's what i'm saying is that i i'm i'm a fan first and foremost and so thank you so very much i remember when i first met you yeah was it is it a good memory you were like an innocent straight boy yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, that would have been ten years ago. So That's adorable. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, Brent, for doing this. I know that uh, you don't really do a whole hey, lot of interviews. Song, you song, y'all did a duet about a couple who was missing picture, each other. Picture, picture. I do remember this picture. night. I remember this night vividly. I sang with a girl. Oh my god, I would love to find her. Uh, yes, I, yes, she was a great. She. I remember she said we got to sing picture, and you were the host, and I was like, do I have to give him my? Do I have to tell him my song? I'm, you know, like I was. You were so tall, and I, you know, you had everything, the glitter, everything going, and uh, um, but one of, like I say, I'm a fan first and foremost, and and I I love showmen. That's why my shows, anything, any show I do, all I all I want to do is bring up amazing showmen and point them out and say, you know, look at this, look at this talent. And you're an incredibly talented individual. Uh, thank you thank for doing you. this for me tonight. And thank you for doing this with us and for, uh, you know, sharing a little bit about yourself. I know, you know, like I say, you don't open up a lot. So thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself with us. Um, do you have uh, any, any places that people can go and find you online that you can tell them? I always announce it online. Like I said, uh, right now, some of the stuff is being, sh people are slowly start shutting down stuff Yeah. because of the COVID. But uh, I'm always on Instagram announcing stuff, Brent, Brent Stargram. Or like I said, you can just go to the, my website. But I'll put it on here on the comments. Okay, perfect. Well, um, listen, I, I am... And I just want to say I wish you the best. Um, um, I hope for your show, I will say the same thing to you from an acorn to an oak tree. 
um keep Thank up you for that. The, the good spirit that you have right now you your your enthusiasm is very obvious it's <laughs> Thank it you. jumps out. I mean, you are so excited. And I love it. Yeah. Please keep that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brent. Thank you for doing this with me tonight. Um, again, everybody, chime in for uh, uh, you know, uh, tune in to Brent Star. Um, look him up. He's you taking me back. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate you, Brent. Um, you have a good night, man. And thank you for our chat. All right, you too. Bye, baby. Bye, bye, honey. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have a good night, everybody. Yes, Pop. We got a pop. <laughs> <laughs>